What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to be discussing this Detroit Lions offense. What is going on with the Detroit Lions offense? Why did it halt in basically the second half? And, you know, the Packers went on a 31 to nothing run. And what's going on with Matthew Stafford? Where's Matthew Stafford from last season? Let's get it started. No, I got a shout out to the uh, man, because it was actually the first time I went live on YouTube. And, uh, you know, guys don't know. Dosa D, uh, he put out a lot of good content for the Detroit Lions. Welcome everybody to another video. Glad you guys are here. And today we're focusing on this Detroit Lions offense. Man, it's been a lot of focus on the defense. So I thought we'd change it up a little bit, take a focus, take, take a microscope, and really look at that Lions offense. Because there's been a lot of good. There's also been some bad that's kind of held us back. So through two weeks in the season, the Detroit Lions have put up 23 points and 21 points. 23 against the Bears. Probably could have been 30. But either way, 23 against the Bears and 21 points against the Green Bay Packers. And it didn't look like we were only going to score 21 because in the first two drives of that game, we scored touchdowns. So it really did halt until near the end where we scored again, but it really didn't matter because at that point, we were out of the football game. I mean, we were down by 21 points in the fourth quarter. So, you know, there were some mistakes made there, but I really want to focus on the offense side of the ball for the Lions in today's video and specifically Matthew Stafford. I've had a lot of, you know, people asking me about Matthew Stafford, what's going on with Stafford, and I feel like I have, honestly, a pretty reasonable explanation for what's going on. Maybe not everything that's going on but a pretty good explanation for some of it so that's what we're going to be looking at today's video now before we get it started first off did you guys watch monday night football i only watched really the end of it i'm going to be honest with you guys but the raiders did win that game i saw them kick the field goal are they for real are they legit they beat the saints like hold up we play the saints are, are they legit shout out to john gruden man he's got that team off to a oh i almost said oh two two and oh starts out to the are they legit though i feel like they might be legit. They might just be. So, obviously, there's a long season. We'll see what happens. Answer that question in the comment section below. Also, go check out my channel, Dose Be Gaming, where I've done a couple of skits and uh, before I've done the gaming stuff. But I'm working on, like, a legit, like, 20 minutes long. Like, a legit kind of short story, short movie type of deal. That's what I'm working on. It's probably going to take a little while to actually, you know, produce. But I've been writing it down. I've been coming up with ideas. I've been building the plot, everything like that. So I think we're getting somewhere, and I think it's going to be really, really awesome. I mean, you guys are going to want to be subscribed. That way, when it drops, you don't miss out. So that's just Dose Be Gaming. You guys can go sub over there if you want to. I would appreciate that. That is awesome. Now let's get into today's video. So Lions taking on the Green Bay Packers, right? You know the Packers are going to put up points. The Lions are going to have to put up points to compete in this game. And that's what they did earlier. They jumped out to a 14-3 to start. And it was like, oh, snap. <laughs> two touchdowns on your first two drives. Like, this offense is doing something. And a lot of it, honestly, the first drive was on Johnson. Matthew Stafford did a nice play action pass to TJ Hawkinson, which was a pretty darn big game. But a lot of it was on Johnson just pounding the ball all the way down the field. And he ended up being the guy to finish off the drive. Kirion, you know, gets us inside the 10, gets us the first down. Then on his very first snap, right next to the goal line, we do a handoff, touchdown. I mean, Kerryon Johnson just walked the Lions offense completely down the field once we pretty much passed midfield, which is what we saw from Minnesota in, you know, week one when they played the Packers. And it was like, oh, snap, like this is the game plan. This is perfect. Like we got this. And then the second drive kind of just, you know, solidified that even more. Like, hey, we have this. Like we know what we're doing offensively because the Lions go down and score another touchdown. This drive, the Lions would get the other two running backs kind of involved here. Your Adrian Peterson, your DeAndre Swift. Swift makes his plays in the passing game and Adrian Peterson also with some tough running. Then we got him to the outside who broke it for a pretty nice gain. And then ultimately that drive was finished off by Matthew Stafford making some really good passes. Um, a one drop by Marvin Hall, unfortunately an out route. But then Stafford is able to go back. He's able to hit Marvin Jones Jr. right where the defender couldn't get it. And the Lions cap it off. So it's 14-3. to It's a good start for this Lions offense. I mean, this Lions offense was clicking at such a high level. It was like, hey, this is what we've seen on paper. And this is without Kenny and two of our starting offensive linemen. Like, this is what we've been looking to see. This is what we need to beat the Green Bay Packers. And then all of a sudden it stopped. And it was like, what in the world just happened? Because all of a sudden we were down by multiple scores. It was like, dude, what the heck just happened? How did this, why did our offense just completely shut down? So that's what we're going to be really looking at today. I did go back through and watch the entire offense. And I just have uh, specific takeaways that I want to go through and really focus on Matthew Stafford. So it's not going to be as long as that video was for the defense side of the ball. But we're just going to be focusing on a few things here with this Detroit Lions offense and why I think they stalled and how I think they can avoid that next week. And also what's going on with Matthew Stafford 
and why maybe he hasn't been playing at the MVP level so far that he was last year. Lions third drive, it gets going, right? The Lions are starting to move the ball down the field again. They get the ball in the second quarter, 10 9 to go in this quarter. The Lions are moving the ball a little bit. Carry on pops it off, then, you know, kind of gets stuffed, then gets the first down eventually for us. The third and 10 situation. But then all of a sudden, Matthew Stafford, you know, he bounces back. Matthew Stafford throws basically like an out route to Danny Mandola, gets you up to about midfield. This is a really good throw when I watched it back because initially it looks like he throws it behind him, which he does. But I think he did it a little bit on purpose because there was a defender to the outside. It looked like the Packers played a lot of zone in this game. But he completely is Danny, Danny Mandola, nevertheless, has 13 yards up to midfield. It's first down. Good stuff. So again, the drive is still alive. You know, you try to take some shots deep. It didn't work. But then all of a sudden, one of the three do, and you got a first down. You're good to go. You're still doing your thing. So here's where maybe you could say that you disagree with the play calling, but I still really don't have too much of a problem with it. Matthew Stafford then, then throws an incomplete pass uh, to Marvin Jones Jr. But then here's where things go really bad. Because, hey, okay, sure, you know, you threw an incomplete pass. It is what it is. You're taking some shots. But then you try to do like a screen play, kind of like a quick little bubble screen out to Jamal Agnew. And Quintez Cephas, from what I could tell, misses the block. And his cornerback gets in there super quick. So the cornerback gets in there, makes a tackle right at the line of scrimmage. So nothing happens. Okay, stinks, but it's only third and 10. We're still at midfield. We can still make something happen out of this. Well, that's not the case. Because all of a sudden, we get a flag, which backs us up 15 yards. It is third and 25. And Stafford basically just dumps off the Hawkinson to get about 10 yards, just kind of to punt it. Better punting field position. So all of a sudden, the Packers get the ball back. So again, you're moving the ball. It's just, boom, that big flag really does hurt. So big flag hurts. But you know what happens, okay? You're not going to score every single drive. So you punt, you give it back to the Packers, and hey, the Packers have to punt as well, so that's not bad. Let's get it back. You know, there's not a lot of time left in a half, and they're thinking, okay, maybe we can put us some points, or at best, at least we can run out to the clock, run out the clock, and maybe, you know, go into halftime with a lead here. Well, as we know, this didn't happen. I know a lot of people are throwing a lot of blame here on Matthew Stafford. I think maybe some could go on Stafford because first play, Lions stand off. They kind of try to get out of their own end zone. They get to the 11, hand off to Swift. The very next play, Matthew Stafford takes a sack here. Now, Stafford started to roll to his right. It looked like maybe he was going to give to the running back, but there was two rushes coming in space, so he's trying to step through. It kind of looks like he's going to get out and, you know, get some, uh, you know, extend the play and be able to make a play downfield because he was looking downfield to try to extend a play, but the defense lineman just grabbed him and held him and he just brought him down. So it was like, dang, it's a sack. Okay, but that's not the killer here. See, I think people are getting really caught up in it, this sack as if this was the killer and this is why the Packers got points. It's really not because the stack still runs the clock. And the Packers called a timeout. It's their final timeout. With a minute 15, they had to call their final timeout. So what I gotta do, run the ball. Maybe you get it down to like a little less than 30 seconds, okay? It's gonna be very difficult to score, especially a touchdown, maybe a field goal at best with no timeouts. So you hand it off, you give it to Peterson, okay, he runs for a couple yards. But what hurts you again here, Odeyabushi, two times, Odeyabushi, another flag, just like the previous drive. This one stops the clock because it's holding, so they decline it. You guys remember when we came back against Dallas? That's exactly what happened. Remember, there's a holding flag, we declined it, so it stops the clock. That's what happens here. So instead of them getting it with about, you know, 30, a little less than 30 seconds, maybe around 20 seconds, they get it with a minute. They get it with a minute to go. And it's like, uh, you can't do that. So two flags. Flags hurt us in this game. So you should have went to half 14 to 10. At worst, maybe 14 to 3. All of a sudden, you go into half 14 to 17 because of that flag, which really, really hurts you. Just to make it even worse, I know this is the offense side of the ball. You come out of half and boom, they break the first play for a touchdown. So you're thinking, okay, we're up by four. <laughs> we can go in half up four. All of a sudden, the next time you get on offense, you're down by 10. I guess I forgot to say this part. So basically, right before half, the line said about 14 seconds. If you guys can remember, Stafford had two completions, one to Hawkinson. He slid down and then Stafford draws the defense offside, which is not beating yourself. That's great. So you get a field goal attempt for 57 yards out, but unfortunately, Prater pushes it. He misses it. So you go in a half down and by three and then he come out you know down by 10 because of the touchdown but i forgot to mention that part but it was a missed field goal they didn't get the ball downfield and Stafford made a great play forcing them to jump offside so that's smart you just missed the field goal unfortunately you're like what just happened like so now all of a sudden your your whole mindset has to change as an offense right you're probably thinking okay what do we do offensively how are we going to change things up right we have to do something now different offensively this is where the problems once again occur so the lines get out there it's their first drive they're down by 10 so the first play you hand it off to peterson there's no game nothing there for adrian peterson okay second play matthew stafford does a little dump off to tj hawkinson gets about four yards you set up a third and six not bad Third and six, you're going to have to throw Stafford out of the gun, looks, throws to Amendola inside. Amendola, my opinion, dropped the pass. I think he dropped the pass. Matthew Stafford puts Amendola in, in, a, in a motion here. He comes in, he comes back out. Realizing there's no one following, Matthew Stafford, to me, looks at that and says, okay, this is zone. 
This is the pre-stab adjustments, right? He realizes this is zone. So when he gets him back and Stafford snaps it, he realizes that he can sit in that zone. So Stafford throws it to a little bit of, a, I would say, Amendola's right side, trying to keep it away from the zone defenders, trying to fit in between. Amendola can't come with the grab. Now you're punting right back. So you can see how quickly things have changed in this game, how quickly the momentum flipped just because of, honestly, two flags. And now that you're forced to punt, now you're in big trouble, right? Because you're already struggling a little bit defensively because you're playing the Packers offense. Defense goes out there. Your defense goes out there. You get a stop. You force another punt. Okay, good. All right, we're still down by 10. We got to get this thing rolling offensively. So they punt it. Just taking a normal punt. Maybe we'll get it to 20. No. Even though it's a touchback, Jamal Agnew now is called for a flag for running into basically one of their gunners for the, for the Packers. So now that he gets a 15-yard penalty, the ball is placed at the 5 instead of the 20-yard line. So now... They're all the pressure on the world is on this offense, right? To get out of this spot. So you have a couple options. Most teams would run the ball here. And I think the Lions, which I probably wouldn't have done after seeing the Vikings game, but at least they're from the five. The Lions go to a little bit of a play action here. Lions go to a play action. And of course, the Packers are going to bring some heat off the edge. So the Packers bring heat off the edge. And in this play action, the running back, Adrian Peterson, misses the block. Peterson missed the block, but they bring two, but he wasn't able to pick up either of them. So they're, as soon as Stafford really gets out of the fake handoff, they are directly in his face. So picture Stafford here. You're about the one yard line. What do you do if you're Matthew? Do you hold the football? You can't do that. You can't really throw it away. You can't throw it away in this position. So Matthew Stafford is forced to just quickly look to write what he said in his press conference was his hot read. He has to throw it directly to his hot read. And the defender, who he probably couldn't even see because the pressure is right in his face because of a missed block, all of a sudden he throws it to that hot read and boom, it's picked and it's brought back for a touchdown. Now you're down by 17. And it's just because of little mistakes. Three flags, two on O'Day, one on Jamal, and they continue to keep pushing your offense back. This offense that was clicking earlier, now all of a sudden is down by 17 points. What just to make matters worse, the Lions offense gets back on the field, about eight and a half to go in the half. You're down by 17. Oh, you lost all your momentum. So what do the Lions do? Okay, let's start the passing game. Matthew Stafford underneath, carry on. He was living on this all game. Dumping it off the carry on, he drops it. Carry on drops it. So it at least would have been five yards, drops the pass. Okay, now it's second and 10. Another self-inflicted error because you dropped the pass. Second and 10, Matthew Stafford throws it to T Cephas. Good play. Cephas makes a nice move, gets nine yards. It's only third and one. This is the one play that I completely disagree with what Daryl Bevel did here. Daryl Bevel spreads you out on third and one. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. You were having success all game with the I form, but Devil Bevel wanted to try something different. Stafford snaps it. You can see from the play, no separation anywhere. Stafford takes a shot to Amendola. It's a complete boom. You give it right back. It's like, what is this offense doing? You self-inflicted wounds over and over and over. And then all of a sudden, this one questionable play call, right? Questionable play call. No one gets any separation. Stafford's forced to throw one-on-one -on -one to Danny Amendola, and it's incomplete. Now you give it back to him again. Packers go down, they get a field goal, and Matthew Stafford's thinking, okay, we got to go get some points. So Matthew Stafford pretty quickly attacks DeAndre Swift first. Matthew Stafford goes, hands it off to DeAndre Swift. Then Stafford throws it to Seafit, back to DeAndre Swift. Stafford was living on his running backs out of the backfield in this game. We're going to get to that in a second. So he's living on his running backs, right? And, and the running backs are working. He's dumping it down. They're getting chunk plays because they're kind of just letting everything stay in front of them. Then Stafford goes to Amendola. He redeems himself, gets about eight yards here. In a third and one situation, Peterson picks it up. Peterson picks this up on an I form, which you just didn't do before. This is what I would have done before. You did it twice in this game now, and you picked it up. You did it with carry on early, and now you did it with Adrian Peterson. Both times you converted, but that one time you tried to go to the gun, spread everybody out on a third and one. On a third and one, you could even do like a play action boot out of the I form. No, you spread everybody out, and it doesn't work. So now Matthew Stafford in the gun, steps up, extends the play. When you extend a play, you can open up receivers, makes a great pass to Marvin Hall, throwing it away from the defender. It's a touchdown. It's uh, 34 to 21. But then the Packers go back down and they score another touchdown. And all of a sudden, you're down by 21 points in the fourth quarter. And honestly, there's not a lot you can do with that. Down by 21, the Lions are forced to pass. You get multiple sacks. You get a missed block here from DeAndre Swift. You get another sack after that. And then all of a sudden, you're just handing the ball off and you punt it. The game's over at this point. Because now, the Packers, all they have to do is drop everybody back and just bring as much pressure as they can. And Matthew Stafford can't just take digging dunks. He's got to get the ball down the field, right? You're down by 21 points. So the game's over at that point. So for this offense, literally, again, this is why I said the Lions beat themselves because they did. It was flags that started it off. Then it was, you know, missing assignments and blocking. Then it was drop passes. Think about this stat for a second. Because we're going to talk about now what's going on with Matthew Stafford. Like, well, what is wrong with Matthew Stafford? I've seen that question a lot. And he hasn't been perfect. And some of this he has to take responsibility for. But I do want to talk about one big factor that I see when I watch Matthew Stafford. Stafford is living on the underneath routes. Underneath 
dump offs, things like that. He's not taking many shots, not many at all. Okay, he's taking them here and there because he's still Stafford, but he's not taking many, not like he did last season. Let's right now lead the league with drop passes. So far in two games of this NFL season for the Detroit Lions, the Lions currently are tied with the most drop passes of any team with six. Six drop passes so far. Last season when Matthew Stafford was healthy, which he played in eight weeks, healthy, he had, they had about 15 drops some season. I couldn't find the exact number. I found like a little chart, but about 15 drops in eight games for Matthew Stafford. In two, they have six already. Six. And that doesn't mean they're bad passes. Those are strictly drop passes because his bad pass percentage has been almost exactly the same from last season. I mean, it's been just a tad worse from last season. So it's not like he's throwing all these bad passes all of a sudden. Drops are drops. That means it hits your hand. You should have caught it. You dropped the pass. Six of those. And, you know, we've seen that drop passes on certain occasions, maybe not as big of a deal. And some of them are a big deal. And this is nothing against Swift because, again, I haven't put the whole loss on DeAndre Swift. I've never done that. We've already broke down that game. But we do know that if he catches that ball, we're 1-1. One and one. If he, you know, like he did, he drops that ball, we're 0-2. I mean, that's literally a whole game difference. Drop passes are important. I think we're seeing it from young guys. We saw Cephas early drop. We saw it Swift in week one drop. Uh, we've seen Danny Madola have some drops. And I think that's a mix between them being young and then still adjusting to everything. And I think it's also a mix of a guy not being there to help them out which we're going to talk about in a second. Last year, when the Lions were putting up all these big stats, is separation. Lions receivers don't get separation. Kenny Galladay did not get separation, but somehow he had almost 1,200 yards receiving. How did he do that without getting separation? Because he was go up and get it. Matthew Stafford could rely on this guy one-on-one, -on -one, heck, sometimes two-on-one, -on -one, to go up and make a play. And Stafford is a super aggressive quarterback, as last year, he was the most aggressive quarterback in the league, statistically, when it comes to throwing into tight windows. 23% of the time, Matthew Stafford would throw a football into a window that is giving one yard or less of space. And that's because the Lions didn't get any separation. So Stafford is throwing all these tight passes. His expected completion percentage last year was just above 60% when he completed 65%. His expected completion percentage this year is higher than what it was last season. And you, many people want to say he hasn't been that good this season. Matthew Stafford is not taking the usual shots he's usually taking. Matthew Stafford is not pushing the ball like usual. The Detroit Lions average depth of pass last year was 11.3 yards. This season, it's 8.2. Three yards less. He's not taking the same deep passes. And I think that does boil down to Kenny Galladay. The Lions are not taking shots without Kenny Galladay. Because one, Kenny Galladay's not there. And two, it's not opening those other players up. You have to focus on Galladay. Now you're focused on Marvin. And yeah, you have Deepo Hall. You have Amendola. You know, these guys, Cephas, are nice. But they're not deep threats like Kenny is. Like, I'm going to go up and get it. You got to watch this guy. He's not. Kenny Galladay is like more of a Kelvin. And when Cephas, Amendola, Hall, these guys are like reception guys without that deep threat to really take pressure off them. They're the guys that are underneath. Well, what the Lions are forced to do right now when they take away Marvin is everything is underneath. Everything is underneath. Go watch the whole game. Daryl Bevel is attacking everything quick. One step, boom, boom. Everything's underneath props. And now to add on that, you're dropping passes, okay? So Matthew Stafford's playing a completely different way through the first two games without Kenny Galladay. That's kind of what they've been forced into do. Some other problems that have went with that. One, drop passes, offensive line injuries. You're missing your guard. Odeyabushi, two major penalties, which basically allowed the Packers to halt your drive and then go score before half. Two major penalties on your left guard because Joe Dell was out. You're also, your right tackle hasn't played in your first two games. The guy that you get $45 million has not played in two games. And the running backs, missing blocks. It's a lot of miscues. The Lions so far this season, both on offense and defense, have beaten themselves consistently. Consistently beaten themselves. So yes, they've shown all these great flashes. And that's why it's like, hey, when they're not making mistakes, they're incredible. Even without Galladay, they're incredible. Yeah, they are. But they're beating themselves. And this is exactly what I said after the post game. This is what I said about the defense. And that's what now I'm saying about the offense after I washed it entirely back. The offense is still here. Matthew Stafford can still be great. The problem is, one, you're missing Kenny, which has completely just changed the way you go out offense. And what the Lions have tried to do, you've been inconsistent when it comes to catching passes underneath. Those have to be gimmies, right? It's become inconsistent. And the rushing game, and what happened in this game specifically, is you could have stuck to that game plan where you run the ball, dump it underneath, because it was working. But you had to get out of it because all of a sudden, flags put you behind. Your doubt going in a half, you should be up four. Instead, you're down by 10. When you first get ball, you're down by 10. And you, you just have maybe a drop pass here. Boom. Okay, you pump back. They score again. It's like, wait, we're down by 17. Our offense has to completely change now. That's what we saw in this game. That's what we've seen so far for the Detroit Lions. The offense is still there. They played against Chicago. They played a heck of a game without Galladay. They should have scored 30 points against Chicago. That's a lot against the Bears. The offense is still there. It's going to be fine. And if Kenny Galladay can come back, we're going to see a completely different new look offense. I mean, they're going to be taking way more shots. This is going to look much better than what it is so far. It's there. 
we just can't beat ourselves just to this point man nothing's missing we just got to go out there and just play fucking ball man that's all it is and we just got to stay together and we can't unravel when things are not going our way we got all the daggone pieces we just got to go play and excuse my language but man we just got to go play man we got the pieces and people could say otherwise it's not in here and say it's this and it's that but we got the pieces man we just got to go show it and can't do too much talking let me know thoughts comments below thank you for watching and i'm out <laughs> i don't know what's going on here i feel like a weather person i don't know why i'm holding this either but look at all these members are you kidding me Hall of Fame, All Pro, Patrons. Look how many All Pro members. I can't even see the bottom, dog. What? If you guys want to be a part of this, all you got to do is click the join button. It's on the homepage of my YouTube channel. But this is absolutely nuts. Shout out to you guys. This is crazy. I had to bring out my cool shirt for this one, okay? Because y'all are legends. I had to bring out the legends. See what I'm doing?